Welcome to How to Make a Coal-Fired Steam Engine Boiler Plant. This is part 4, Silver Soldering and Machining the Boiler Top Cap. What I'm doing at the moment is cleaning up the piece of brass that I cut on the bandsaw in the last episode. It's very important, whenever you do any soldering, whether it's soft soldering or silver soldering, to thoroughly clean the parts, and I'm doing this using a piece of Scotch-Brite. Once the metal plate is cleaned round the edges, it's time to spread the flux onto it. This is Easy Flow number 2 flux, and I always keep some flux pre-mixed, ready to use, in this small plastic pot with a screw top. And periodically I top up this pot with some more flux powder and a little water. I'm applying the flux around the edge of the brass disc using a piece of silver solder. No special reason for this, I should really use a small paintbrush, it would be simpler, but this seems to work just as well. Because this video, like most of my steam videos, is a tutorial for beginners, I'm applying plenty of flux, too much flux in fact, and I will show you the outcome of this at the end. To get a neat and secure soldered joint, you don't need to apply as much flux as this. And do remember that wherever the flux ends up being on the metal, it will turn black and look very nasty. And the silver solder is also likely to flow into that area too. So now that the silver solder flux has been applied all the way around the edge of the brass disc, I can put the gunmetal ring in place and I'm rotating it to make sure there's an even coating of flux on both surfaces. Silver soldering can appear to be a little bit of a black art to people. What you do need though, apart from cleanliness, I've shown that, and flux, I've shown that, is a powerful heat source. To show how much heat is required to successfully silver solder, what I'm going to do is apply a piece of silver solder, here it goes, and all it's doing is just staying as a blob stuck to the side. This is not the way to do it by the way, I'm just illustrating a point. You will see that when the work gets to the correct temperature, the silver solder will flash around the joint. It's a bit of a balancing act when silver soldering larger components. It's not exactly the same as silver soldering unions onto small pieces of copper pipe. A lot more heat is needed, you cannot use a small blow lamp. The ones that you buy at DIY stores, just leave them in the DIY store. This is a proper sievert propane torch that connects to a gas bottle. And the head that I currently have fitted to the propane torch is approximately an inch and a half in diameter. What I could do is use an even larger head on the propane torch. That way I could get the whole piece of metal to the red colour that it needs to be very quickly. But I do appreciate that people out there may not have such a large blowtorch. Don't forget it's not the size of the blowtorch that matters, it's the way that you use it. And the way that I'm using this is going around the outer edge and getting each part of it hot enough to melt the solder. A disadvantage of having a really massive blow lamp is you can melt the part that you're soldering, so that's something worth considering. My workshop is very small and it's even smaller when I get in it because I'm not the smallest human being on the planet, and I don't have sufficient room for a brazing hearth or even some fire bricks, so I silver solder on top of the vise with the item being silver soldered sitting on top of a small piece of fire grate from a model steam locomotive, and this seems to work quite well. The next step is to leave the piece to cool to black, and then quench it in some water. This does two things, one is it stops it being hot and it stops you burning your fingers, and the other thing is the thermal shock often removes some of the flux residue. But as I put a massive amount of flux on this component to show you what happens to it, the thermal shock's not really done much for it. But if I sit it in my acid bath for a few hours, it should clean up quite well. Over now to the lathe to machine the component. I'm going to machine it to the finished size that I need. I used 3mm thick brass, because I didn't want it to distort. If you heat up a piece of brass sheet, say 16 gauge, then it will distort with the heat and flex. I didn't want this to happen, that's why I used a thicker piece of brass. The boiler top cap is a really important piece. It's the first thing that your eye gravitates to when you look at the boiler, so I need it to be nice and flat, nice and level, and look like a casting. At the moment, I'm machining the edge of the piece of 3 mil brass, because, as I mentioned, when I cut it on the bandsaw, I left it purposely oversize. And I'm using the self-centering four-jaw chuck on my larger lathe. Two reasons for this. One is, it's much bigger, and it holds the piece more securely, and it's much better to hold a piece of metal in the chuck with four jaws than with three. The component has been held in the chuck just by the inside edge of the ring. 
and if I was using a smaller lathe with a three jaw chuck, a couple of things are going to happen. One is the part is likely to fall out of the chuck and the small surface area of the chuck jaws on a small chuck are more likely to distort the ring as I will be pushing out from the inside of the ring it may take on a triangular appearance and that's why I'm using the larger of my lathes with a four jaw self-centering chuck and it's very securely held so I can actually take quite deep cuts the speed is important once again don't go too mad this is not cast iron but it will squeal and it will ring because it's quite a resonant part and if the part starts to resonate making a high frequency ringing tone you'll get really nice little patterns these are called chatter marks normally you can machine brass at quite a high speed but because the part is in a hollow format it's best to take it easy and keep the speed a little lower than normal and take gentle cuts and pushing it a little bit as you can hear by the sound it's making and it's also worth remembering that the cutting tool first of all cuts the brass then it cuts a layer of silver solder between the brass and the gunmetal then it starts to cut gunmetal which means that you're actually cutting through three distinctly different metals in one cutting operation this top cap is not a very heavy duty item the main function of this component is to support the chimney there will of course be a superheater built into the base of the chimney and its primary function is to collect the hot gases and persuade them to go up the chimney this boiler is heavy to start with so I do not want to add any unnecessary weight and make it even heavier particularly if it's going to be used in a model marine application so I'm machining away some of the 3mm brass I mentioned earlier that I used 3mm brass in the first place so that it wouldn't warp and distort during the silver soldering process this is a perfect opportunity to show some common problems when machining this is a very common problem and it's called chattering and just look at the state of the finish it's diabolical maybe it's time that I took up another hobby like needlework so what happened there the lathe was running at too high a speed and the tool was blunt so what have I done now it seems to be a bit better I've changed the tool for starters the cutting tool was very blunt this one is a nice round nose tool it's a carbide tipped round nose tool and it's sharp and I'm also introducing some lubrication this is my steam oil rapeseed oil machine oil mix and it started chattering when the metal started vibrating once chatter marks are generated on a piece of metal being turned you do have a problem because every time the tool goes over the chatter marked area it sympathetically chatters and the chatters may get to be a slightly different shape but they still don't look good so what I'm doing here and I'm running this in real time so the viewer who said to me please can you run the lathe operations in real time will be very excited by this and I really hope that his lifespan is long enough to get to the end of this sequence and if my voice should suddenly stop on this video there are three potential reasons for this one is I've fallen asleep the second one I've fallen into a coma and the third one I've just died and I'm now slumped over the desk and if the reason was the third thing that I mentioned there would of course be a slumping over the desk sound that follows the silence or if you hear a sound like this then I've decided to end it all and now we are entering the danger zone the cutting tool is getting near to in fact it's on the chattering area and it's not chattering now why is it not chattering it's the same tool that chattered previously even though it's sharper than the first one I used so why is it not chattering the answer is very simple I've slowed down the speed of the lathe if you listen to the tone of the lathe it's running in back gear and the sticky oil mixture that I use is still in place you can see the difference in color when the tool gets up to it it removes it and it gets lighter and the general tone of the cutting has changed there is no sympathetic resonance being set up with the metal and the speed and feed this is a top tip if you do get chatter marks switch off the power to the lathe and then pull the lathe chuck over by hand as you slowly advance the cutting tool taking a fine cut I do like to give out tips like this because I can remember when I was a beginner and I'm eternally grateful to certain engineers who took the time to explain how to do things and one engineer that I have an incredible respect for is Mr Don English 
of Jubilee Fittings, who explained a lot of things to me when I was a beginner. As you can see by the image currently on screen, I finally got a very good finish on the brass of the top cap. You can also see that I've drilled a hole in the centre and enlarged it with a boring tool. I didn't bother showing that because it is boring and you've seen plenty of that in the last episode. And I've just said this line without taking a breath. Right then, it's over to the Boxford lathe and I'm reversing the part in the chuck because the flange that fits over the top of the boiler is far too thick. But I didn't remove it earlier because I needed the surface area with which to grip it in the lathe chuck. I'm being very careful with this operation because I don't want to foul up at this late stage. I'm keeping the speed of the lathe quite low because resonances are nearly impossible to get away from. This entire assembly is now a little bit like a very shallow bell, so every time the tool touches it, it rings. It's not exactly well supported either. I'm just using the small three jaw chuck with the internal jaws pressing against the outer edges of the hole in the centre. I could of course have used a parting tool for this, but that would be dicing with death because if the parting tool digs in, then that's the end of the top cap and it's a start again situation. What I'm currently doing is taking a very fine finishing cut across the front of the flange. Once I'd taken one fine cut, I took another fine cut coming back the other way. And all that's left to do now is use a deburring tool to remove the sharp edge on the inside surface of the flange. I never like to leave sharp edges because I'll be the one who cuts my fingers on them first. In this clip I'm using a piece of folded coarse sandpaper to complete the deburring process. So at last, here is the completed top cap. That was the inside, which will be much better after it's been in the acid bath. And here's the outside, looking rather nice, even though I do say so myself. One viewer commented that there wasn't much room between the top cap and the top of the boiler, and I would agree with that. But we need to keep the boiler's physical size small and the centre of gravity low. There's a bit more work to do on this top cap yet, just please keep watching the episodes. All will be revealed in the fullness of time. But for the moment, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.